Today we want to look at solving quadratic equations by using the square root property. I think you know that 3 squared and negative 3, all squared, both equal 9. We're going to use this idea to solve quadratic equations with the square root property. We say if x squared equals a, for a greater than or equal to zero, because remember we talked about that, if we square a number, it's always positive, then x equals the square root of a, or x equals the negative square root of a. This is really important. Whenever you use the square root property, you have not just one, but two possible equations. And people often forget the second one. You might see this written as x equals the positive or negative root of a. So look at question one, x squared equals 64. We're going to use what I've written on top here and say, that means that x equals the square root of 64 or x equals the negative square root of 64. So x might be eight or negative eight. This could be written as x equals plus or minus eight. But I want you to get into this habit of writing it as two equations because when the equations become more complex, it won't be simple to do them together. So let's keep this habit of writing them separately. Let's look at question two. X squared equals negative four. Oh, hang on. Are you noticing something? Do you notice this negative sign? Do you remember what we said here about a? a has to be greater than or equal to zero. What if you didn't notice that? Then you would have gone ahead and written that x equals the square root of negative four or x equals the negative square root of negative four. Well, I hope now you noticed it because you know that this will give us no real solution. You can't find a real solution to the square root of a negative number. Let's try question three. Now question three, actually all of these questions where we're solving using the square root property is the one time where we don't want our equation to equal zero. We're going to isolate x squared. So the first thing we want to do is add 10 to both sides of our equation. Divide by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now we have two equations. x equals the square root of 5 or x equals the negative square root of 5. In other words, x equals plus or minus the square root of five. Now, depending on how Pearson wants you to write this, you might need to say x equals the positive square root of five comma and the negative square root of five. These are all fine, depending on what's being asked for. Pause your video, try question four. You subtracted 36 from both sides of the equation. You divided by negative three. That's going to be positive 12. Now you have two equations. Don't forget you have to simplify. You never leave a radical unsimplified.
we have two, three, two twos we can take out. So this is two root three, and this one is the negative two root three. Question five is interesting. Now up here I said isolate x squared. Maybe I should just say isolate the square rather. Because if I look at question five, I can't isolate x squared without opening the bracket. And we don't want to do that when we're using the square root property. What we see here is we have x minus five all squared equals 49. This is perfect. The square is already isolated. I have two equations. x minus five equals the square root of 49 and x minus five equals the negative square root of 49. Do you see here why I need two equations and why it was a good habit to keep practicing it this way? Now I know the square root of 49 is seven. I can add five to both sides. We find that x equals 12 and negative two. This one's a little bit different. It's not just plus or minus. Pause your video, try question six. You have two equations. One equals the positive root of 10. One equals the negative root of 10. Subtract two from both sides. I can't simplify the square root of 10 any further. And notice that even though the two is negative, I left it in front. If for those of you familiar with the quadratic formula, you'll understand why we do that. The rest of you just know that we leave that integer in front. We could write this in two ways. We could say we have two solutions here separated by a comma, or we could say that P is equal to negative two plus or minus the square root of 10. Going to your e-text or your homework in Pearson and spend some time practicing these types of questions before we get to the next step, which are a little more complicated.